This is Zain Karim. He's 41 years old and his family is his life. He thought he had it all and then he got sick. I was very emotional, you know what I mean? Very, uh, cried, uh, cried a lot. From being fit and productive, his kidneys had failed. Yeah, I was sad for my kids, sad for my, my mother, sad for my wife. Zane quickly went downhill. He's lost over 20 kilos and can barely leave the house. He has to do home dialysis four times a day just to survive. So you either do this, accept it, or you don't do it, you're going to die. So I'm going to fight this disease. He's such a strong man. He is the most wonderful person. I know him for 21 years this year. And he's a wonderful partner and a good father. For Zane, the answer to his prayers has just happened. Transplant surgeon Dr. Almi Muller got the call early this morning. A brain-dead donor has become available that's a match for Zane's blood and his tissue. She is rushed to Panorama Hospital. We've got consent to take this patient who is now brain dead organs. The race is now on to harvest the kidney and transplant it into Zane. We try and keep that time as short as possible. For the kidney to survive, the team is just 12 hours. It's already 9 o'clock. Kidney disease affects around 23,000 South Africans every year. It costs up to 20,000 rand a month to keep a patient on treatment. It's an amount the state simply cannot afford for the majority who need it. And so the people in here are the lucky ones. 80% are sent home to die. This is something that Professor Brian Rayner, head of the kidney unit at Grotteskir, has to face on a daily basis. Death from kidney failure is not pleasant. It's slow, it's lingering, people can't eat, they're nauseous, they're vomiting, they're breathless and they're cold. How do kidneys work? The kidney is an incredible organ. The kidney receives 20% of your blood supply and filters nearly 200 litres of water or plasma in, in, in a day. It regulates your vitamin D, it regulates your blood cells. I mean, it's just an amazing organ and if you don't have it, you die. How stressful is it for you as a doctor to have to turn patients away? It's extremely stressful. And as head of the unit, where the ultimate responsibility rests with me, I, you know, sometimes I have many sleepless nights about these issues. Basically, it's up to each hospital to decide how much of their limited resources will be used for kidney patients and how much will go elsewhere. The money is needed for ongoing dialysis and for kidney transplant operations themselves. The trouble is there's such a significant shortage of donors in South Africa, most people wait four to five years before a suitable donor is found. Of course, many die waiting. But Zayn isn't one of them. Back at Panorama Hospital and the operating theater is buzzing. The team has been hard at work releasing the kidneys. We need to dissect out every artery, every vein, and make sure we get it at the right length to be able to transplant it. Nearly two hours have passed and Dr. Muller has just taken the kidneys out. It's very nice kidneys, uh, no problems here. They look in a nice condition. They flush nicely, they're a nice pale color. So we put some of the cold solution around the kidney put, also to preserve it. Yeah. Given the extent of the need, why do we have so few donors? Well, it is limited by, firstly, that the fact that not everybody who dies is a suitable donor. The second thing is then that we do need to get consent from the family. And I think the family sometimes struggles to cope with, firstly, the death. And now that we come and we ask them also to be organ donors. And I think it's difficult to cope with. Dr. Miller finishes harvesting the organs at 11.30. She rushes off to Grote Ski. Meanwhile, Zane's heard the good news and has hurried to hospital to prepare for the operation. I can't wait. You know, I'm nervous, but I'm also, um, I can't wait. In a few hours' time, Zane will be ready to go down to the operating theatre. Yeah, let me get a kidney. <laughs> let me get a kidney. But many kidney patients aren't so lucky. Michael Regan's kidneys failed unexpectedly six years ago. Something was wrong with me, but I didn't know what it was. So I went to a doctor and he said to me, you've got a very serious kidney problem. I want you to go straight to the hospital now. And I was told um, that my kidneys had collapsed totally and that I would have to go on to dialysis for the rest of my life 
or alternatively in time look at, at a kidney transplant.